I'm Alicia Harris, and our topic is the master's degree requirement for teachers, and we're now open for questions. First question, tell me a little bit about yourself. Second question, why did you choose this topic? Sure. Um, well, the reason we chose this topic, I'll start out with that one, is because we both want to be elementary teachers, and we thought that researching this topic would really be interesting because it kind of applies to our lives and our future. So we both danced doing that fun stuff, and like she said, we want to do elementary school teachers, and we're just going on opposite sides of the spectrum. She's going to Western, and I'm going to Eastern, so we're just covering the whole state of <laughs> give us a little bit of the background like what is the debate what are we talking about what's been done in the past okay so originally in Kentucky teachers had up to 10 years to go back to school and obtain their master's degree so you can start teaching with just your math bachelor's sorry and then go back to school get your degree and then you're fine generally the principle with that is because of having tenure that keeps them wanting to go through their educational process and not just sitting where they are, getting comfortable, and just relaxing with that. Um, and it was a requirement in Kentucky, as Alicia said. But in August of this year, the requirement was actually lifted. Um, so they no longer have to uh, get their master's degree within 10 years. And <coughs> I'm assuming they don't have to get it at all. The main teacher. Okay. Tell me a little bit about the logic behind requiring a teacher to have a master's degree. What's the thought process there? Touching back to what I said, it was having them continue in their education so that they didn't find something that they thought was comfortable and then reach a point to where it doesn't work anymore. So it allowed them to go back to their studies to learn something new to see how they can make their teaching process better. And it also, kind of what she said, mm -hmm. it um, makes sure, make sure that they're still qualified to have their position. Either of you know how long a standard master's program for a teacher lasts, how many semesters, how many credits, that sort of thing? It's 36 to 54 credits, which is about 12 to 18 classes, and a year to two years. Two years. So the thought is that if they get a master's degree, their education level will stagnate, they'll be innovative for that year and a half, or for that two years that you just described, and then is it not going to stagnate or get stale after that? Well, where they had that 10-year gap period that mm -hmm. they could take up to, it kind of, so say that you went fresh in out of getting your bachelor's, mm -hmm. you taught up till the 10 years, then you got it for that, it would re-energize you. So it would be like a fresh start. You have something new to work with. Oh, do you agree? Yes. Did you research the costs of the master's degree program yes. and the viability of an online versus a traditional versus a blended type? Can you fill yes. us in on that? Um, so this is just on a general scale for all master's degrees and not just for teaching. But um, the range for the cost is between $30,000 and $120,000. And that's obviously a great cost for someone who potentially has children and is trying to support family and trying to pay off those loans. Um, while you are trying to still teach and maintain that education would be very difficult. And um, graduate students borrow about three times as much as undergraduate students. Um, they would borrow around $18,000 while getting their master's degree versus $5,460 per year of their education. Um, and it's definitely a lot more costly to take it online rather than at an actual university because of the um, accessibility of the online. Um, can you guys talk about teacher certification and kind of the, how, how does that play into the role of the process of getting the master's? Is that a separate process? Um, are there stipulations on the types of master's that you have to get? Okay, so I'm going to do kind of who regulates it, which is kind of not part of your question, but it touches it. So the EPSB, which is the Education Professional Standards Board, regulates all of this. They're the ones that write the decisions. They're the one that made the decision to drop it. They just had to have approval from the state of Kentucky. So they do all of that. They have a whole bunch of different things. So they're broken down into three specialized groups, which is Division of Educator, Educator Preparation, 
which is assessment, internships. So that's where like KTIP would fall under as well. The division of certification, so that would be going to get your recertification, to do your original certification. If you came from a different state to be certified in Kentucky, you'd go through the EPSB. And then they also do ethics. So it would be misconduct between different racial groups. Why did, why did they do a way with it? What was their reason? Cost. They just said purely cost. So if they did away with it for purely cost reasons, are the other benefits, at least that you outlined earlier, are they no longer valid? Should we not be concerned that they did away with it just because of the money? Because you said that so there's a fear there if you don't go on to get that additional education. That is what fuels my desire for it to be reinstated because I do think that once you hit tenure, you're gonna get in your routine and there, honestly, there are some people that have hit tenure that don't have the best teaching ability because they're using old techniques that no longer work. But that's why I don't like that the only reason they changed it was because of cost because if cost is the only factor, why didn't you take into consideration doing more scholarship opportunities for teachers getting that? And kind of going off of that, um, the master's program, although it's a wonderful program, um, it's not the only way to make sure that teachers are qualified to do <coughs> their job. Um, there's also national, national board certification that costs a lot less than a master's degree would do. Um, there's a $65 application fee and a $2,500 assessment fee for that. And um, it's a lot more prestigious than a master's degree is in Kentucky because only 3,929 teachers in Kentucky are national board certified. So that's another way for teachers to be assessed without having to go in thousands of dollars of debt. And back to your point, if there was something they could do after getting their master's, you can do your national board certification. You can have a master's and be national board certified. It's just another prestigious title for a teacher. Can you speak to any teachers that have the, in, the national board certification to get their perspective on it? Um, I did speak to a professor at um, UK. Now, granted, I do not know if she's nationally board certified or not, but I can give you her opinions on this topic if you'd like. Sure. Okay, so her name is Dr. Cindy Chong, and Chong, she works at UK, like I said. And so she is the assistant professor at UK, and she's very concerned with this decision because it's going to affect UK as a whole with revenue. Because if teachers aren't having to go back to get that requirement, your enrollment for your master's is gonna decrease. Now granted, there are gonna be some teachers who just, they want to do this, so they're gonna go back and get it anyways. But because of that, numbers are gonna go down. Funding's already been cut some, so now that they're not having that, they have decreased enrollment, funding's gonna go down even more, which eventually could lead to the entire program having to fold because of lack of funds. Do you see any conflict in her opinion there, Alicia? conflict in her opinion? Yes. Um, not really. Okay, she's, in, she's in favor of reinstating the requirements yes. of the master's degree. And she stated that's, that that were, the lack of that requirement has done what to the university? Has cut funding. No, sorry, prior to that. They had funding cuts already. Okay. They have prior funding cuts. And now that enrollment's going to be down, they're already, they're going to have less money, like even less because of that. Sorry, I didn't make that clear. No, that's right. So she's speaking to, her concern is that not requiring the master's degree is gonna negatively impact UK's master's program mm -hmm. because less people are going to enroll in it, which will have a negative financial impact on the university and on enrollment, yes. is that correct? Yes. Okay, did she speak anything to the preparedness of teachers or why she thought that master's degree was better for them or did she just speak to the financial and structural impact on the university? I simply asked her opinion whether she thought this was a good decision or a bad one. Mm -hmm. And she did say that she thought it was a negative decision, and that was her main concern, was for the school, that it would hurt the school as a whole. You see how that's a conflict for her, yes. though? Yes, okay. I do. Yeah. If it's going to take money out of my pocket, I might be against it, as yeah. opposed to, oh, this is better for teachers, maybe. Mm -hmm. okay. um, kind of going off of that, we didn't really go back to certification or other means of certification, or what that looks like. Can you comment on KTIP and the state of KTIP currently? Um, what the purpose is in that? 
Um, well, currently the K tip program is suspended um, indefinitely, and here on the EPSB website it said until June 30th, 2020. But then Ms. Katz said that it was indefinitely. So I don't know. the K tip program is indefinitely. Yeah. So the K tip is suspended until June 30th, 2020. So it's no longer. So if I'm person least qualified to be on this panel, can you explain K tip to me real quick? Yeah. You can give me the high level. Okay. So. KTIP is Kentucky Teacher Internship Program. So basically, you have your own classroom, you're the teacher, but you are closely observed. So your principal or other authority figures above you will be observing you to make sure that you're doing this correct. Like a teacher apprenticeship? Basically. But it's your classroom, you're not under someone else. So I guess my question then is, is, is looking at this, if teachers are no longer required to do certification, they're no longer required to do a master's, um, teachers that are being hired with the bachelor's right now, what are the qualifications that they have to meet to get into a classroom and start instructing? If I have a degree in English, can I go teach chemistry? <laughs> is that okay? Can I do that? Interestingly, you can get a master's degree with that. That is one of the uh, preparation programs that you can go to that's different than just going back to school. So there's a whole bunch of different ones. But one of them was if you have taught for 10 years and you have exceptional work ethic, you can get an alternative to a master's. If you've taught on a higher educational level, so on a university for 10 years, you can have an elementary education master's, which is quite interesting in my opinion. But there's, so there's definitely. What, what do a lot of the other states around us do? They don't have KTIP, obviously. We no longer have it, for at least for a while. But what do those teachers have to do for their additional certification or for what do their principals do for their new teachers, etc. I personally didn't really look outside of the scope of Kentucky, but I did go to other, not go to other countries, but I researched other countries and their processes, but not in English. What, what do theirs look like? Um, so in Spain, it's very difficult to become a teacher. Um, so you have to go to school and get your bachelor's degree or an equivalent of a bachelor's degree. Um, and yes, yeah, so you must get a master's degree to be a high school teacher. And all candidates must take the Oppositiones exam. I'm hoping that I'm saying that right because it's in Spanish. Um, but it's a four part exam, and there are two verbal parts and two written parts. And in order to pass the verbal exams, you have to pass the written ones. So you take the two written ones first, and about a week later, you find out the results of that. And if you pass them, you have to take both of the oral ones, and the scores are given out of 10. And I can also go into what those look like. Um, they're very detailed and very strict. Um, and if you do pass the, that exam, um, you're entered into a pool of about 5,000 teachers annually, and only 200 teachers are accepted each year in Spain to become teachers. And once they're hired, they have that job for life. They don't have to think that there might be a possibility that they will lose their job because it's already secured. And they don't have to take the opposition on ex uh, exam again. Um, and if they don't make it, then they um, make a list of the top 100 schools that they want to be placed in, and they are entered in T, able to become um, interwind is what they're called. And it's a very competitive list, and um, it's like substitute teaching. And if you are given an opportunity to substitute teach, and you aren't able to do that, then that is very negative for you, and you probably won't be called again, and you don't have a hope of being a teacher. So it's very strict. What is the praxis exam that is given here in Kentucky? So there are different levels. So like your praxis one is sorry, practice one is a preschool test. So it's on your common core subjects, math, reading, language, to make sure that you know what you're actually doing. So you have to take that and pass that to then take your practice two. Praxis 2 is content based for what you're going to be doing. So it's also known as the subject assessment. Yeah. So your Praxis 2 for an elementary school major is going to be different for than a high school because you're teaching different things. So it's what you're going to, the areas that you're going to teach once you. Yeah, so the Praxis 2 is more of a, um, <coughs> A focused exam and it's on a certain topic that um, you pick and there's about 400 different ones you can pick from because there's so many different subjects to teach um, and if you want to take the Praxis 1 
Um, it's three different sessions, like Alicia mentioned, and um, it's ninety dollars for each individual portion. So you can take English one day, math the other day, and then the other one separately. Um, and that's ninety dollars each. And if you want to take the whole test, it's one hundred and fifty dollars. And um, the subject assessment, the cost is um, it ranges from fifty dollars to one hundred seventy-five dollars, depending on the subject. And it's only one test. And it rank the time for the core is um, an hour and twenty-five minutes for each portion. And the whole praxis one is five hours long for the combined. And for the subject assessment, it ranges from an hour and a half to four hours, also depending on the subject. And that's still in place, correct? Yes. How does Kentucky, with their praxis scores, compare to other states as far as the pass rate and national average or regional averages? Um, well, according to the U.S. Department of Education, um, in the nation, the passing rate is 89.6% in recent years, and that is declining from the past. Um, I don't know the figures from the past, but it's definitely declining. Um, okay. um, but the score requirements in Kentucky for the practice for the core, um, in math you have to get a 150, in reading you have to get a 156, and in writing you have to get a 162. And I'm not sure what passing is in the praxis. Um, but I think that sounds pretty close. So that's kind of like <coughs> skimming the bottom. Hope you said 89.6% nationally. What, what's the pass rate in Kentucky? I don't know in Kentucky, but that was just on a national scale. So this isn't for Kentucky, but this was a, um, not a survey, a report that was written by the, the U.S. Department of Education. And they said only about 28% of teachers felt very well prepared to performance teach in class. Sorry. <laughs> but, Did yeah. either of you all look at, just you know, ask your own LCA faculty, how many of them had either been KTIP certified or how many of them had a master's degree? Well, you're sitting percentage? next to our lovely KTIP certification. No, <laughs> And I talked to her, and she gave me her opinions. We spoke numerous times with Mrs. Pett. So did you find that a lot of our teachers have either a master's or a half a K-TIP certification, or is it, a, is it a low percentage? Um, I spoke more just with Ms. Groves and Mrs. Kett, but I do know that I can't speak on the other, like, schools in Kentucky because I've not been there. I don't know their teachers. I didn't go around and ask everyone, but it seems like for our school, since it's so small, we have a high number of people with a higher education degree. Because there's Dr. Fultz, there's um, Dr. Not Dr. Fultz. Parks. Dr. Parks, thank you. I was like, Dr. Phil is not right. Dr. Parks. But for our school population being so small, it seems like we do have a very high number that have higher certification than educational. And Mr. Wesley is currently working on his doctorate. So as students, does that make you feel that you are being better prepared to succeed in college and throughout life, knowing that so many of your teachers have masterates or doctorate degrees? So how do you think so what is your thoughts on Kentucky getting rid of the master's program? Like, is our educational system going to decline because of that? I think that if we don't replace the master's requirement with something else that assesses the qualifications of teachers, that it will decline. Uh, I don't know exactly what that solution would be. Definitely national board certification could be something that we could think about. Um, but I feel like if we don't supplement it with something else that makes sure that our teaching standards are not declining. Don't you think that most school systems, their administration would set up a, a system where there'd be a teacher mentor program if you take the K-TIP out of it or a master's degree out of it? Don't you think they will have the awareness because it's their school that they're going to be evaluated. They're going to want to set up those mentoring programs naturally. And um, actually in Boyle County in Kentucky, there's um, a program called the BC-TIP, and it's similar to the K-TIP program. And it's basically what you just described was a mentorship program. Um, and it's similar to the K-TIP, as I mentioned. And um, 
the mentor actually gets a $1,500 stipend to be the mentor of a younger 